it's on. What's popping? I tell everything is popping. <laughs> everything is popping. <laughs> when you 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 eat some fufu <laughs> and just go <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, Kojo, how are you? You're not taking over from me. Eh? I'm not taking Starting over from you. Starting your statement with food. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Nathan, it's good to see you. It's a new week. Yes. And there's a lot happening. Um, yeah. Sco- Today I left home early, uh-huh. super early, because mm-hmm. I wanted to avoid traffic. Yes, I left home <laughs> super early. I didn't ad- avoid the traffic. Who was <laughs> sending <laughs> 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 their children to school? Yes, and and the the regular thing that has been worrying me: seeing kids in vehicles at dawn. Yeah. I think as we develop our urban spaces, we need to think about ensuring that we have schools and these services spread out. Uh, equitably in our community so that parents don't have to come all the way like you pick your child from Amazon and bring your child to school in say Roman Ridge or some place that's a matter of choice too if you live in Amazon there I'm sure there are schools within that enclave your kid could attend but some of them would tell you they want their kids to attend a very specific uh, anyway, school so there is that well. yeah it's a matter of choice well COVID is also <laughs> wreaking havoc everywhere and it's on the front page of the daily graphic upsurge in COVID-19 cases Police will enforce safety protocols. Precedent. GS issues guidelines on school reopening. FDA declares zero tolerance for unregistered products. And the front page of the finder. President gets stuff on COVID-19 protocols. There's another very important headline from the finder. GES assures public of safety. More headlines. Parliament must suspend fees for tertiary students. This is Mahama Ayariga. Mm-hmm. And there's an article by Samson Ladia Enini. He says, stop abusing the uniform, please. And the big one on infrastructure, $570 million Accra Tema motorway expansion contract, duly evaluated, negotiated. This is according to the Ministry of um, um, Roads and Highways. Export application under after through ICOMS start today. We will insist on schools' adherence to protocols. This is Nasia and Chinese frontline doctors to help Ghanaians combat COVID-19. Front page of the Ghanaian publisher also goes to the COVID story. Kufad warns of another lockdown if COVID-19 second wave persists. Backbend blasts MPs for disgraceful conduct on January 7. Photos of uh, Muntaka on the, over here, Carlos Ahinkra and John Jinapo. Now, the Ghanaian Times, there's a photo of Dr. Patrick Kumar Boadji on the front page, and the headline says, Surges in COVID-19 cases. Ghana Health Service races to secure facilities to treat increasing number of patients in Accra. The finder has some headlines that suggest that facilities are running out of test kits when it comes to COVID-19. Ministerial appointments expected to be announced this week. Autopsies on 20 COVID-19 deaths reveal acute lung conditions. And farmer arrested for allegedly killing man, 45. From page of the Daily Guide is a tragic one. Pasta kills daughter, nine, for being a witch. Oh. Ah! Hmm. This is crazy. COVID on killing spree. <laughs> also on the front page, Muguchi probes fake COVID reports and Parliament approves committee membership ratios. Now, the Chronicle, despite millions in budgetary allocations, please uniforms for sale. At barracks, personnel paying 350 Ghana cities and 550 Ghana cities to purchase them. Illegal mining tax force seizes eight pump action guns from King's Peb Mining. Front page of the Daily Statesman, President heads off another lockdown if disregard for COVID-19 protocols continue. Framer retained as Chief of Staff, Fawaz Aliu and Carlos Von Brazi to serve as deputies. So it looks like... First batch of appointments have been <laughs> announced. Now, the new proceeding guide, NDC MP faces $2.5 million fraud uh, charge. John Kuma begins work, barely 30 days as MP, bringing development and changing the face of a Jusso. Crow South MC touts his developmental projects. Western, region, uh, Western North Regional Secretary deserves appointment. This is according to a group. And Waxi begins women preventing violent extremism workshops in northern regions. Finally, front page of the BNFT, BOG to arrest CDs depreciation with $775 million injection. GSA postpones implementation of revised importer registration fees indefinitely and active private pension contributors overtake basic national scheme. I'll do two more papers, the Ghanaian Observer and the Economy Times. A Kufado to scrap some ministries. Ekufado honored over after. So those are two stories related to the president. 
on school reopening, GES assures public of safety and NDC cries foul over composition of election petition panel. Now, if you go to the Economy Times, government to borrow 22.3 billion Ghana cities for first quarter. Economic growth outlook unclear as two economic giants contrast on projections. So the projections are going mother side, father side. <laughs> and BOG sells $775 million worth of Forex for 2021. If you go online, citynewsroom.com says, new variant of COVID-19 recorded in Ghana, Nanado reveals. And he also says, don't give me a reason to close down schools again, Nanado to students. The president has also ordered the IGP to enforce mandatory wearing of nose masks over COVID-19 spike. And he threatens to in reintroduce COVID-19 restrictions. And the medical laboratory scientists say, we are ready for COVID-19 testing after schools reopening. If you go to citybusinessnews.com, Dr. Sarkodia says, government must increase agri sector investment to improve the economy. LNG to power project to reduce cost of electricity in Ghana, that's according to an energy consultant. Device measures to stop fuel increments, COPEC to government. And businesses, businesses or business gradually booming for traders at University of Ghana as schools reopen, there's a video to go with that story. If you go to my joy online, it says new variant of COVID-19 detected in Ghana, and that's according to um, the president. Don't give me a reason to close down schools again. The Kufado caution students. GS assures public safety ahead of reopening of schools, and citizens are allowed to film police when being searched. That's according to the MTTD. If you go to the East African, at least 83 killed in fighting in Darfur. Violence often centers on land and access to water. Bobby Wine says siege at his home continues. Museveni wins Uganda election. Those are some of the stories there. If you go to the BBC's homepage, it says EU and US demand release of poison Putin uh, critic and US-bound migrant caravan beaten back in Guatemala. That's the story there. If you go to CNN, Trump prepares to issue pardons. Now he's set to uh, set to roll ar around roll out around 100 pardons and commutations on his final full day in office on Tuesday. Melania Trump departing White House with lowest favorability of her tenure and confidence in Chinese vaccines are taking a hit. But as COVID-19 cases grow, some countries are still pushing ahead. So those are some headlines if you go online both in Ghana and on the international portals. Let's start with the fine that they've broken down. Let's start with the fine that they've broken down what the president said yesterday. And the main headline is President Gets uh, Tough on COVID-19 Protocols. And the story is written by the editor, Elvis Darko. He says, President Nana Adedanko Kufuado has announced tougher measures, including strict enforcement of safety protocols to fight rising COVID-19 cases and warned that he will not hesitate to impose another lockdown if Ghanaians continue to flight the, flout the safety uh, protocols. He has asked the police to enforce COVID-19 protocols, including the strictest enforcement of the law on mask wearing at all public places and in public transport. He's charged the police to ensure the closure of all nightclubs, pubs, cinemas and beaches that may be operating in defiance of the law. He said the police would be assisted by the other security agencies if need be. Now, the president reminded Ghanaians that severe punishment exists for persons breaking the law on the mandatory wearing of masks. Now, he also gave us an update on the cases. 1,924 active cases. COVID-19 treatment centers have gone from having zero patients to now being full because of the upsurge in infections. There's, uh, the Ghana Health Service is recording on average 200 new cases of COVID-19 infections daily. 120 patients uh, require hospitalization and intensive care, and the number of severe cases has increased sharply to 120. Okay, so it's, it says the number of patients mm -hmm. requiring hospitalization and intensive care is rising. And the number of severe cases has increased sharply to 120. Okay. 33 people are in a critical condition. And according to the new stats um, from the Ghana Health Service, the number of persons who are severely ill are surprisingly relatively youthful persons with no previous underlying health conditions. And 352 people have been confirmed uh, dead from COVID-19. 
and arriving passengers tested positive for the new variant of COVID-19. So now we've confirmed mm. that Ghana has a new variant of COVID-19. Mm. And 13 regions have active cases. Okay. Now on contact tracing, the president says that, uh, said that a considerable number of contact tracers are being mobilized to follow up on the contact of all who test positive. And the guidelines for schools have been given to them and to um, ensure strict execution of same to protect children going to school. And uh, Daily Guide on page 6 says COVID on killing spree. They also do a regional breakdown. Greater Accra continues to record the highest number of cases, uh, counting a total of 32,436 COVID-19 cases followed by the Ashanti region and the Western region. And the story also goes on to say that uh, somebody has died. Uh, that is the Executive Secretary of the Coalition of NGOs in Water and Sanitation, Konewas Ben Arthur, who lost his life to covid uh, uh, over the weekend, according oh. to the paper. Sad. Let me take you Sad. then to education from COVID. There's a lot happening in education. If you go to the Daily Graphic, page 16, GES issues guidelines on school reopening. The Ghana Education Service has come out with guidelines for the reopening of schools. Dubbed guidelines for school reopening during COVID-19, the guidelines are part of the measures put in place by the government to ensure that all educational institutions are safe for learning and teaching. With the guidelines which have been circulated across the country on various social media platforms, the GS seeks to promote the observance of all the COVID-19 protocols to make schools safe for learners, staff, and educational workers. Now, if you go to page 20 of the paper, you will get uh, details of the guidelines. It talks about facilities. It talks about class size. So let me give you some details on class size. For basic and senior high schools, the document said district directors and heads of schools should use their discretion to address peculiar situations, to address peculiar situations in their district and schools, lesson periods and breaks shall be as stipulated by the GS and subject to the approved COVID-19 safety protocols. Visits to washrooms should be regulated to promote social distancing and safety. Parents are encouraged to provide their children with food while going to school to minimize the movement of learners for food within and outside of the school premises there's also one on facilities now if you continue to uh page 28 parents queue for school fabrics is here uh, and also use first day of schools reopening to tidy up classroom compounds the national inspection authority is also engaging schools on safe reopening so there's a lot happening yeah. in that space and finally on page 24 congestion at bus terminals following reopening of hmm. schools there was congestion at major lorries terminals in Accra last Saturday and yesterday as travelers, many of them students and their parents desperately searched for buses to report back to school in various parts of the country. The development followed the directive from the president for schools at all levels to reopen after about 10 months of closure following the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Buses were in short supply at some stations due to the huge number of passengers at those stations, many of whom became stranded. Now, question <coughs> though, on the, on the bit about using the first day to tidy up classrooms and compounds, mm -hmm. schools have been closed for about eight, nine months, right? Mm. Yes. And within this period, we've carried out fumigation and disinfection and exercises. Mm. Whilst doing those exercises, didn't we take the opportunity to make the waste companies also clean up the schools? Well, mm -hmm. clearly that didn't come out. I'm sure some schools, some schools did. At, you know, in their individual ways, did that. But I'm sure on a global scale or on a large scale, didn't happen. If you go to citynewsroom.com, talking about uh, school-related stories, the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Medical Laboratory Sciences (GAMLS) says it is prepared to assist in the management of COVID-19 cases following the resumption of schools from their coronavirus-induced break. The group maintains that its 18 testing facilities across the countries, other assisting centers, as well as the private institutions, are equipped to test samples due to the reopening of schools. In a statement, the GAMLS assured Ghanaians of the ability of COVID-19 testing labs to test and produce results within 48 hours should there be the need to respond to crises uh, that may arise because of the reopening of schools. Now, I added that there are enough COVID-19 testing kits in the country for use, and this in the meantime could support or can support testing for any anticipated rise in case numbers. And still on schools, Parliament must suspend fees for tertiary students. This is Mahama Yaraga speaking. The story is in the Finder newspaper. The story says the Member of Parliament for Boko Central, Mahama Yaraga, has petitioned the Speaker of Parliament to move a motion 
that will disallow the payment of fees for fresh and continuing students in tertiary institutions in the country for the 2021 academic year. And he says that basically um, there's been, uh, there have been lo loss of jobs, economic instability, and so many issues, and he feels that uh, fees must be suspended. Now, the other thing he's talking about is that certain line items like sports fees and all those things must also be scrapped because in this particular period, a lot of sporting activities will not happen. So students must not be made to pay those fees. Well, let's go to Parliament because there's a lot happening there. Majority, minority, who does what, who owns what. On page three of the Daily Guide, Parliament approves committee membership ratios. Parliament on Friday approved a formula based on an agreed ratio of 138-137 for the composition of membership of committees, parliamentary delegations, other parliamentary groups and associations, and the membership of the committee of selection. Per the agreed ratio of 138-137, of the 19 membership of the committee of selection, excluding the chairperson who is the speaker, works out to 10 members from the majority caucus and 9 members from the minority caucus. The leadership of the House pursuant to orders 151 and 154 of the Standing Orders of Parliament met on Tuesday, January 12, 2021, and determined the formula for composition of the members of the Committee of Selection. Now, if you go to the Daily Graphic, there's another version of that story, Majority Minority to Reflect in Composition. And it says that the leadership of Parliament has recommended that the composition of committees and other parliamentary delegations, groupings, associations, and the Committee of Selection be based on the ratio of 138 to 137 for the majority caucus and minority caucus, respectively. So it's basically the same story. Now, I'll take you to the center spread of the Ghanaian Times. Three interesting stories. Ministerial appointments expected to be announced this week. <laughs> and Yao Che says that there's growing anxiety, especially within the circles of the ruling or governing NPP, over persons expected to be appointed to constitute the second term government of President Akufado. And he basically writes that um, this week we shall see a list of ministers and deputies. Now, the other story is mm. related to um, COVID-19 testing and related matters. Noguchi Memorial Institute investigates alleged falsification of COVID-19 test results. Now, the story says the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research has begun investigations into alleged falsification of COVID-19 test results at the Institute. This follows reports on social media alleging breaches of the COVID-19 testing protocols. The Institute, in a statement issued by Professor Abraham Kobna Annan, um, the director, assured that the allegations uh, will be treated with uh, seriousness. And it's because um, there are some allegations that um, test results are being tampered with. People mm. test positive and they are given negative. Um, people are paying bribes and all those things. So yeah. that's why Noguchi oh, is um, responding. Now, the final story in the center on. spread, Nathan, is something we've been talking about. Greta awaits government directive to go ahead with 20,000 housing units. And according to the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, they have signed a commercial contract with the government <coughs> to build 20,000 housing units mm -hmm. per year. So okay. each year they'll build 20,000 affordable housing units. And they are waiting on the government's directive to begin construction. I will take you to the Daily Statesman and the Daily Guide. Daily Statesman's front page says, Framer retained as chief of staff. <laughs> okay, let me see what the story says. Give you details. Are they the rumoring it or they are saying it? They say they can, they can report. Uh -huh. That's president. And now the Danko Kufado, if you know the Daily Statesman, you know that this report, ah. is they can report. <laughs> <laughs> that Nana President Anadu Dakwe Kufadu has finally affirmed his decision to retain Mrs. Akusia Fremont Selpari as the Chief of Staff at the Office of the President. According to our Jubilee House sources, barring any last minute change, President Kufadu will in the coming days make the announcement to that effect. The President is also expected to name Fawaz Aliu and Emmanuel Edumwa Bosman, popularly known as Carlos Von Brazi, as his, <laughs> his deputies to replace Francis Asensu Boache and Samuel Abujina Po who are now MPs. Everybody knows who Frema is, but Carlos Von Brazi, whose real name is Imano Edumwa Bosman. Uh, I'm interested in how somebody can have an alias, which is another full name on its own. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Those who know him will tell you. He, he, he is an international relations uh, guy. He has worked at the Impact Assessment Unit of Office of the President okay. before. He was a director of planning and implementation at the National Security and also worked as a human rights law lecturer at the Mount Crest University uh, okay. holds a master's in international peacekeeping uh, from the university from Eastern Mediterranean University in North 
Cyprus. Fawaz Aliu, uh, he's a less sad adversary. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We are looking at that one nicely. Also worked <laughs> as the Counselor Permanent Mission of Ghana to the United Nations in New York and Assistant Director at the Office of the President, Cabinet Secretary from 2013 to 2014. So, uh, according to the statement, these are the persons who are coming to the, the sad story on the front page. Pastor kills daughter for being a witch. Oh, no. A pastor of Heaven Kingdom Palace International in Accra, Gideon Boachi, has been arrested by the police at Nkranza in the Bono East region for killing his nine-year-old daughter, Queen Star Boachi, for allegedly being a witch. The suspect is currently in police custody pending further investigation. Now, according to the story, a senior pastor of uh, his church accused the girl of being a witch and advised that she be beaten every night from about 1 a.m. onwards till she becomes free from the demon. Oh, no. Gideon foolishly carried out the act and in the process murdered his daughter in cold blood. Oh. Afraid of the consequences of his action, Gideon secretly puts the body of his dead daughter into a sack called, properly called, as, properly called Ghana Must Go and left it at the town's cemetery and left for Accra. I hope the Lord punishes oh, no. this pastor this, and the other pastor this, this and punishes terrible. them well, 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 well. This is terrible. See, man, in fierce. Hmm. Ah. Anyway, let's, let's go to other stories. I'll just bring you quick headlines of um, okay. some stories. Police uniforms for sale at barracks. And the Chronicle, that's the big story for the Chronicle this morning. And they say that though the supply of uniforms to personnel of the Ghana Police Service, according to the Police Act, is supposed to be free, the Chronicle's investigation has revealed that some of the personnel are still doling out various sums of money from their own pockets to purchase their uniform from illegal sources within the service. Mm. And they say that the sale, which is contrary to the rules of the service, occurs at no mean a place than the 37 service workshop close to the DVLA in Accra. Now, the other story... Mm -hmm. It's on the motorway and after and are borrowing. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. on government's uh, uh, finances, government to borrow 22.3 billion Ghana cities for first quarter. And Elam Desewu writes for the Ghanaian Times that the government through the Bank of Ghana would raise 22.3 billion Ghana cities by issuing notes and bonds for the first quarter of 2021 from the money market. Now, on economic growth, the World Bank and Moody's have different growth projections. And the Economic Times headline says, economic growth outlook unclear as two economic giants contrast on projections. But what is the government of Ghana's projection? That will also be very, very interesting to know. And $570 million Accra Tema Motorway Expansion contract duly evaluated and negotiated. This is according to the Ministry of Roads and Highways. Yeah. Um, you know this the NDC caucus? Yes, the, the yes NDC and he says that they went through all the question. various processes. So that contract is sound. Okay. And just to add to that, the BOG is going to inject $775 million into the economy, according to the BNFT. $300 million will be injected for Q1 alone, and economists say the outlook is positive. Okay, just a quick note. If you go to CNN, uh, edition.cnn.com, it says, the U.S. President Donald Trump is set to roll out about 100 pardons and commutations on his final full day of office on Tuesday. So that's one last thing Donald Trump will be doing before. Don Trump. Don Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting stuff. Thank you, uh, Godfrey. Thank you, Kojo. That was the newspaper review. Up next is the City Business News.